Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegzat. Folks, you can, you can reach Teddy's service every day when you want to sign up, right under the newsletter tab, folks, the Tiger Forex Report. Check it out. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Teddy puts out an outstanding weekly report on Mondays, updates that follow throughout the week when warranted, and it is a great time to keep track of the Forex market. Nah, that's enough said, folks. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. What a crazy uh, 24 hours it's been, huh? We live in interesting times, Teddy, man. We say it all the time, but uh, yeah, not often do you see, what was it? I mean, geez, you're talking about 1,500 points in the Dow, uh, the NASDAQ 100 giving up almost 1,000 points, just just crazy numbers, let alone in currencies, man. Dollar mm -hmm. index, um, where do you want to start things off today as you go around? Uh, well, I think the reaction to the CPI number is something we should talk about. You know, Please. I've been talk, t saying how the economic numbers are going to be such a important thing as far as direction and making you know decisions in the marketplace and you know we've been talking about inflation now obviously for months and i think this number is very important you know it's showing that you know when the cpi came out last month everyone was saying hey you know inflation is cooling down and blah 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 it's like no it's just laying off the gas a little bit you know and even now we're looking at it well maybe it has in certain sectors but we see in other sectors it really hasn't you know i mean we have I mean, I think a lot of it's also price gouging. You know, I mean, companies need to make their margins or make up their their losses from what they've gone through over the past couple of years. And it's really hitting the economy, you know. And I think that's why when the CPI came out the way it did, the stock market really got hit the way it did because earnings are becoming an issue, you know. So I think that that's something that's going to affect all of the markets. And we're really going to see a lot more volatility based off of these things coming moving forward. Yeah, it's amazing trying to just figure out where we go when so much of the analysis has been so wrong. I mean, what was it? Was it March when they said we probably peaked and, and maybe that was the super headline number? Uh, we had some crazy right. things going on with crew during those months, of course, which pushed those headline numbers to some pretty stratospheric levels. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, here we are in September, right? A and we're getting numbers that are actually accelerating and on the core side, they really are, man. And a mm -hmm. lot of conversations uh, I was talking about earlier, we got mortgage rates above 6%. How's anybody gonna buy a house right now at 6% and then are they gonna be in rent? The rent is gonna mm -hmm. lag and that's gonna have a dramatic effect for years to come. Very difficult in my head to wrap my head around and I'm just throwing in my analysis that agrees with a lot of what you're saying, but it's just something I've been thinking about a lot because if that's such a big factor, let alone everything else, and that's its right. own can of worms, right? As in, I don't even know sure. what happens there for food and everything you're saying, man. Because, listen, folks, CEOs, okay, it's not their responsibility to tame inflation, right? They have a business. They have employees. You have to mm -hmm. do what you have to do in that business. Now, there is right. gouging going on in certain areas, I'm sure. But to some yeah. degree, they're dealing with rising, whether it's human capital costs, right? Whether it's cost of goods, whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. um, they have to survive and, and the, the problems they're dealing with are forcing them to raise prices. And if people are gonna pay it and that's gonna allow them to succeed as a business, that's how things work, man. So right. that's its own can of worms, but then you add in the mortgage rate and how rent is just gonna factor. I don't see how numbers come down to 2% in the next couple of years, man. Maybe we get close, that's almost the best mm -hmm. case scenario. But it's a tough one right now, um, and we're seeing it in those in those numbers. Right. So you jump from that, Teddy, and then you jump, obviously, huge moves in the dollar index, right? Huge moves in yields. Uh, mm -hmm. We had some action in crude as well, still holding up pretty well this morning for mm -hmm. crude. Uh, maybe we start with the dollar index. What, what's your take on the dollar index as we're pushing almost 110 again on that dollar index? Um, well, you know what? I'm bullish the dollar index overall. You know, I mean – the number, the numbers out of Europe and the UK are looking really, I mean, abysmal, if you will, at best. You know, sure. so I mean, as far as the dollar index, I can't see how it's not going to remain strong, especially with the Fed coming up next week. You know, so I mean, we know that the, the Fed is aggressively using this direction right now as far as raising rates they are very hawkish and now I think with this number it just gives them more fuel to the fire to support yeah. their narrative you know whether it's right or wrong well that's a whole nother issue but sure. that's something you have to follow and that as long as they are relentless in that on that path then the dollar index is going to continue to rise it's going to put a lot of pressure on the euro and, and also the pound and also on the yen you know I mean there's just no there's nothing that would counterbalance that you know that right now you know I mean especially 
oil, and maybe even if that sells off a lot, you're looking at these energy prices now in in uh, the Europe, in Europe, throughout the EU, and even in the UK. That's pretty much energy efficient or independent. You know that are just insane. You know, I mean the the level of the I mean, if Americans would would be paying what they're paying right now in Germany and other countries in the EU for their uh, electricity and their gas, we would yeah. have riots in the street. We would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, seriously, who's going to spend a thousand dollars a month for their electricity for a one bedroom sure. apartment? You know, yeah. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Even the you conversation know. around price of the gas pumps and, and you know, we yeah. get it, but it's, it's staggering sometimes what other countries are paying. Right. And, and for sure. us, it's just not the norm. So I get it because it impacts your bottom line, man, um, right. when you're paying those weeklies. But, yeah, they have some serious issues in crude. I mean, mm -hmm. crude has helped the see the inflation narrative tremendously. I mean, there's a sub you know, extreme risk, and I know I'm mm -hmm. speaking to the choir here, man, but there's an extreme risk when you're chopping at 80 to 90 and we have inflation running super hot that what happens right. if we chop back around between 100 and 110, which is right. not out of the realm or even, you know, wherever it ends up, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. been very helpful over sure. this period of time and still we have such a big problem going on. Now, there's two factors. Right. There's the slowdowns, you know, all that stuff that affects screwed, mm -hmm. affects screwed. Um, but yeah, interesting where we go. How about how about the yen? If we could jump around, because I know even today sure. you got the yen moving with some action, um, even right. more so than than the euro or the dollar. You're backing off. You were almost at like 145. I was looking at yeah, and now you're mm -hmm. pushing 142.87, still pretty lofty levels. But what's your take sure. on the yen? Well, I think that these, you know, as we buffer these new highs, you know, you're going to see a nice corrective sell offs. You know, I mean, I think what they're doing is they're squeezing out the week longs, people who are trying to jump in on a trend that's been going on for over a year. You know, so as we're buck bucking up against the highs on a top, you know, or a what seems to be topping, I think that's why you're getting these little, re you know, these little re uh, corrections to the downside. Um, sure. But I'm bullish overall. I mean, you have oil that is stabilized. Um, but then, you know, we had a buy signal in oil that we put out in the report for this week. You know, I think that the low that was set last week in oil may be the low for the next couple of weeks. It's very likely that that's going to hold. There's nothing that really could. I mean, we got numbers, oil numbers coming out today. Maybe that changes everything, you know. So sure. but I right now, I think that overall that is still bullish. You know, the dollar index for sure, because of the fundamentals with the interest rates is very bullish, you know, and that's going to drive these currencies. And, and the U.S. dollar yen, you know, even the Bank of Japan came out again. They're staying dovish. They're not going to be hawkish. So they remember their narrative was they were going to defend their currency three months ago. They never did anything. Yeah. And is, and now that their narrative is we're staying dovish. So whatever that was just an idle threat, you know, which back then when that came out, I remember having the conversation with you being like, I think you can count on them doing something because the Japanese usually don't play games like this. You know, so what's going on over there is a whole new dimension. But it's definitely by the actions speak louder than words. Doing sure. nothing is exactly what their action is. You know, doing nothing is still doing something, you know, especially when it comes to the markets. And with that being said, we're going to be bullish to U.S. dollar yen. I like it. Can you hang with us for the final three minutes? So I'm going to sure. think about what I'd love to just chat about is, you know, I don't think the horizon is near. But what are you looking mm -hmm. for? Maybe if there is a change. All right. We'll just chat about that okay. when we get back. Stay tuned, okay. folks. We'll be we'll right back. One more segment. Too. Perfect. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now up about 15 points, Dow up about 92. Markets holding up relatively well for the first 25 minutes of trading. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad, folks. Check out his newsletter under the newsletter tab, the Tiger Forex Report, uh, out every Monday with a new issue and updates to follow. So, Teddy, I agree, man, that the trends are pretty well intact. It's tough to argue against that. Mm -hmm. uh, for those looking for a potential change of shift, shift of change um, in terms of when that comes, when maybe, you know, you maybe see maybe for those in fixed income, right? You're talking about the yield. You're talking about the mm -hmm. dollar. We might not be there now, but where does your mind go as you look for that? Are you looking for multiple CPI prints? Are you looking for a Fed indication? How, how are you thinking about if that change comes about, whether it's, you know, three, six, nine, 12, 18 months down the road, whatever it is? Um, I would say that the only thing that's going to really change things right now would be a Fed change where their stance has to really reverse gears. The only problem is if they start to lay off their what they're doing, it totally just 
tears apart their whole narrative of what they're doing is what's going to help cut inflation. Sure. So I think I think what you're going to see is we're going to continue to see CPI and PPI rise and continue to trend in this direction for the next six to 12 months easily. You know, so I mean, there is no reason to think that anything's going to turn this around right now. There's just not. I mean, too many people are scrambling, too many businesses are collapsing, you know, and now you have issues where, and this is something I've talked to a lot of people who deal with logistics and supply chains. Before you couldn't get anything because you couldn't get stuff wasn't being delivered. It was either stuck on one part of the world or whatever. Well, what people have started to do, you know, just like in the beginning of the pandemic, when people started hoarding toilet paper, people have been hoarding other things in the supply chain. So now when you have producers, the, for instance, for food and, other, and also in man, you know, manufactured products, things they use for production, they've ordered more than they normally need because they couldn't get any. So they started to think, well, we need to order ahead because we have this business plan that we need to produce this amount of X whatever widget good it is, okay? Now you have too many people sitting on stuff they can't sell. That's another issue. Lots of issues, man. Teddy, yeah, I appreciate so. you taking the time with us every week, man. Uh, appreciate the insight. And we'll find out where we are next Wednesday. And that's Fed Day, ride man. The, ride the inflation wave, baby. It ain't going away. Awesome, man. That's Have a great trade. one, Teddy. Folks, thanks Take for care. tuning in. Stay tuned.